In this video we're going to cover some general tips about uh, Unity quirks and syntax and modeling stuff. And I've been teaching Unity for about half a year now and these are the issues I see over and over again from new students. Always attach a mesh collider to the thing with a mesh renderer. So you may think I can't pass through this, but I can. And that's because right here, I attach the collider to the empty container game object that holds the rock inside. And this happens with modeling stuff. It's inside. It's the thing that has the mesh renderer. That's what you want to attach the mesh collider to. If you have a ton of objects in your game, then on the left here, you can really make quite a mess of all the objects. It's hard to find anything now. So you can do game object, create empty, call it horses, and then select all of those and put them in that. And now we're a lot more organized. You can do that in code too. If you have another game object, you can just change the parent like this. And this will make this game object, our self, belong to that container. Say you want to compress your project, you might get this error. And that's just because Unity has it open and you might need to save it or save the project or quit Unity. One thing you have to watch out for in Unity is you can actually change your game when you press play and then stop. You can permanently make changes from their prefab system. I don't really like this, but with this code here, I'm getting a prefab. I'm making it scale twice as big and I'm making a cube. You'd expect when I press play, we got our cube and I stop it. Now when I stop it, you'd expect it to go back to normal, but the cube is bigger and it gets bigger. So when you press play and unplay, you'd really expect your project to go back exactly as it was. And uh, I really don't like this, so I actually kind of avoid prefabs and just write stuff into my code. So in your resources folder, this test cube, its scale is being permanently changed. I can put this back to one, and when I press play, it is now two, permanently. What? What? Surprisingly, this comes up a lot. Uh, don't leave Unity open for a month on your computer without shutting down. Shut it down sometimes. Unity will just start doing crazy things. If you save a Blender file in edit mode, it won't import into Unity. You have to be in object mode. You also can't have any curves in your file. When you're making 3D models, you should have an idea of scale. So one unit should be one meter. Because if you bring in uh, models in Unity, sometimes they can be huge or super tiny. And it's not really a great place to try to figure out exactly how to uh, scale things. So you want to do it in the modeling program. After writing some code, you might get a parsing error, which generally means you're missing a bracket or a semicolon or something. And in your code, if you click on a bracket, it'll tell you, it'll highlight the other bracket that tells you which it's closing. So you can then find out that this is the missing bracket and add it there. You don't want to just go to the bottom and I've seen this. You don't want to just add a bracket here because that completely changes the structure of your program. You want to find out where it was supposed to be. This one's tricky because it doesn't really tell you very well, you know, the what's the problem here. Um, your program might tell you it has some invalid arguments. Well, what's what's the problem? They're all numbers. Well, sometimes if you have a decimal number, you've got to specifically say float for F. So the language we're writing in C sharp is cap sensitive. So there's a difference between little n and big N. And this sort of thing shouldn't really happen because when you're writing it, autocomplete should pop up. You can't see it in the video, but I can just press enter and it completes it for me. 
And that also tells me it's correct. So if autocomplete's not working, you gotta look at the rest of your program and there's something wrong with it. And fix that now because the only line that should be wrong is the one you're writing. As you're writing a line, it can be read because it might be confused. But once you finish writing the line, it should it should work. If I have some some long names, right? It's very easy to type that. I'm not typing super long name, but yeah, I'm really not doing that. I'll give the first couple letters and press up and down and just press enter. And it's reassuring when autocomplete works because it means what you're typing is potentially valid code. Also, the file name has to match the class name. So if I create a new script and I call it maybe by accident, just press enter. Well, okay new behavior script. Well, I can change it now to script script, my, you know, whatever I want it to be. But if I open it up, script script still says new behavior script for the class and the file name's different. The way you'll see this in Unity is I might want to add script script, but it's not there. That's what that looks like. So it's compiling or it seems to compile. There's no errors, no red warnings but I can't add the component. So the file name has to match the class name and I see this from my students all the time. There are different IDEs to help write your code. An IDE is like mono, that's what it looks like. It's a kind of a text editor, it helps you out a bit. I use um, Visual C Sharp 2010 Express. It's a little better, I guess. So you have some options. Sometimes you may want to rename a variable or a class, a function name or a class name. Depending on your IDE, I, I press F2 to refactor or rename. And I can actually rename all of these to say walk speed. And this is good because it's better than a search and replace. I could do a search for movement, replace it with a walk in the current document, and replace all. Now I've actually changed this cm.movement because I replaced movement. That's no good. Finally, this is why semicolons and brackets are actually really useful. They can be annoying, but we've got all this crazy white space and it's hard to tell what's going on. But you can format the document and it cleans it up. And you can actually tell now, based on the indents, what's going on. Uh, in mono, this is uh, edit, format, format, document, and pretty well every IDE can do that. If it can't do that, say, it were, say this is a little crazy. If I remove this bracket, it can't do it anymore because it's, it's confused. It needs to be a valid script in order to fix it. So I've been teaching uh, Unity in high school for about half a year now. And uh, these are just some of the things I, I see a lot of the time. So I hope this was useful.